G'day everyone, Max Wright here, and um, we've got a cool video today. So Peter Schiff has uh, gone ahead and commented on two of my videos, uh, and so I just wanted to um, respond to those, and I thought it'd be fun to do it in a video format. So here that is. I know, I pro <clears throat> pardon me, I know I promised to do a video for you guys on um, the collapse in the faith of government. That is gonna be the next video. How to play with that, how to profit from that, how do you need to position yourself in front of that as that kind of plays out over the next few years. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to get that video because there are a lot of fun plays that we're gonna talk about uh, where you can really profit from that. So please do that. And as always, I really appreciate everybody's likes and views. This channel's really taken off lately and we wanna say uh, welcome to all the new subscribers as well. So I did this video called uh, Bitcoin versus Gold, which is safer. And um, what it was, it was a, I laid out a video um, where I created 16 characteristics on the desirable traits that you would want in a perfect money. Uh, to my knowledge, I've never seen anybody else do this and in this way. Most people can come up with about six or seven traits of desirable um, traits of, of money. I came up with 16. I did, I think, what was a pretty honest uh, attempt at a comparison of gold versus Bitcoin against those 16 traits. And uh, that was that video. Peter Schiff's uh, comment was, well-made video and you make a lot of good points. But you fail to point out that Bitcoin gets an F in intrinsic value, which means that it also fails as money. Gold wins hands down. So um, let's just pause there and, and jump in with a response to that part. So this concept of intrinsic value, this is kind of coming from um, a concept called regression theorem. This is something that uh, Mises postulated. Um, it's a part of the Austrian economic school. And it basically says that before money can be money, can be money it has to have had intrinsic value in and of itself. People had to be using it and it had to have done something and performed some function prior to it to, to get its value. Once it has its value, now people can use it as money. And if it has, like gold, has a lot of very good traits for money, then its use as money can explode. But it has to have value beforehand. So this is a very interesting theory. Um, and certainly, you know, Mises is one of the greats. But um, I've been thinking about this for a long time and I've actually, uh, I'm fortunate enough and honored enough to uh, have a good friend in the name of G. Edward Griffin. He was the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, like what most uh, uh, would suggest is just the authoritative book on the Federal Reserve and monetary science. So, I mean, I've happened to have had this, I've happened to have had this conversation with him a number of times and I pushed back on something that has pretty much has been assumed to be true forever. Let me back up a few steps here. Right now into the, in, the, in the world today, I think gold, about 3% of gold mined is used in industrial purposes. Only 3%. 97% of its uses is either in jewelry or as money. There's bullion sitting around. So this, uh, this kind of raises a question. Now the question becomes, now, and that's kind of the modern day. Back in the day, I don't think um, gold had any particularly industrial uses. The uses today are things around like electrical cables because it's a good shielder for electricity. I don't, for thousands of years, I don't think um, gold had any industrial value at all. Um, I could be wrong on that. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Um, but it had very, very little industrial uh, value at all. The argument is, that people have been wearing gold for thousands of years. We can think of the Aztecs and the Incas and everything else. And so it was people wore it as jewelry. Because gold had value as jewelry, it satisfies the regression theorem, it had value, and therefore it can now be money. But I wanna push back on this idea, something I've discussed with Ed Griffin a number of times. Why do we wear gold and not lumps of coal? Why, how does this make sense? Why? do we choose gold? And let me put it to you very simply, we wear gold as a display of wealth. And this, this, is, this, this is just so well documented in so many different ways. Um, plantation owners, you know, they used to work in a farm, but you know, the Southern Bells would wear these pristine white dresses that got dirty immediately. Why did they wear those white dresses? It was because it displayed their wealth. They didn't have to work and they didn't get dirty. Um, you know, we can just, there's just hundreds of examples of people wearing their wealth to display their status, to display their wealth. The reason gold is jewelry and not anything else is because it is money. It, that's it. That's the reason. It's because it can be used as money. It's an effective use of money. Then it can be used as jewelry. So I just think regression's theorem is flipped on its head. There, it does, it is possible for something to have such good traits that it is so well suited to be money that people want to use it as money 
and therefore that's its value because it is it, it facilitates trade. That is a reason. That is an excellent reason to give it value, and therefore um, it doesn't need value prior to use as money. But let's just say that didn't persuade you. Okay, I get that. Who the hell is this guy on the internet? You know, contradicting Mises. I get it. Let's take another tack. Let's say regression theorem is, is true and it's actually, yeah, it's perfectly valid and acceptable. As I said, Bitcoin has, the majority of its use is as a monetary metal, right? So, and industrial use, it's like 3%. So the question becomes exactly how much use does it have to have in order to have some value that it can be used as money? Because blockchain technologies have value. It is an irrefutable, um, immutable law, uh, record of exchange that cannot be altered and exists on the internet. You have people um, lodging their, their marriage certificates there. You have people declaring ownership over um, certain real world assets on the blockchain. We have people using the blockchain for a whole bunch of reasons outside of as currency. However, exactly the same as gold, if you take the argument that people love it as a jewelry first, it's such a good money that the vast majority of uses of gold is now as a monetary bullion. So let's accept the fact that it was a jewel, it was jewelry first, and we see that it's the vast majority of its price, the vast majority of buying power, people buying gold to use it for something, now use it for money. How is that different to Bitcoin? Bitcoin has some uses. Some people out there are using it. It's infinitesimally, infinitesimally small compared to its monetary use. But that's because it is such a brilliant money. So it had some value. So regression theorem is satisfied. Okay? So now you, so now you might want to get down to percentages. Well, you know, jewelry was used, you know, let's say, I don't know what it is, 35% of gold is used as jewelry. You know, that's not the same as less than 1% as Bitcoin. So how does this fit into regression theorem? What's the magic number? Is it 2%, 5%, 10%? What is it, right? How much of it has to be used? All you need is for it to have some use and therefore it has some value. It might be pennies. It has some value. Then once it has value, if it has all the other traits that make it an incredible uh, money that people want to use for trade and 99.99% of people uh, are using it, we've, we've satisfied the regression theorem. Everything that is both useful and scarce has a value. It's satisfied and now the price got bid up because it is such a perfect money. So love to hear your thoughts on that. Did either of those two, and they both, you can take one or the other, only one of those arguments needs to have made sense and you satisfied the criteria that Bitcoin either has intrinsic value or doesn't need intrinsic value. It's intrinsic value is, it's the perfect money. So let's leave that here. Um, let's go back to, to Peter's, the rest of his thing now. You also ignore the huge cost charged by miners to maintain the network and the potential for improvements in technology to hack the blockchain and counterfeit Bitcoin. Let's take those one at a time. You're also ignoring the huge cost of the, the cost charged by miners to maintain the network. Um, yeah, I mean, but there's a huge cost in the existing monetary system, be it gold, be it credit cards, be it the Federal Reserve, be it the taxations. There's always costs. Um, in maintaining these systems. And so I have, uh, I have no problem with what the, the miners are charging because the market has deemed that what they're charging is perfectly acceptable because we're using it as money. So it's, it's, I don't think it's an argument neither here nor there. However, let's say you do think it's a big problem. There are other blockchains that have solved this problem. Um, delegated proof of stake is one such system where the cost of mining has come down you know, in the order of like 100, 100 fold. So there's lots of different ways to accept this. And Peter, if you win this argument, you're just advocating for another blockchain, still another cryptocurrency and not against gold. I don't think you'd take that as a victory. The next one, and the potential for improvements in technology to hack the blockchain and counterfeit. So, and counterfeit Bitcoin. So this is an interesting one. Okay, so yes, there could be, there is some a possibility that there is some technology comes along, let's say quantum computing, and there exists a period of time where when this quantum leap takes place, and it does need to be a quantum leap, several orders of magnitude and inefficiency of processing power would have to be achieved. This is something that doesn't happen every other day. Maybe it happens once a century, something like that. 
but we are talking about a quantum leap. What, so, okay, so, that, that we're talking about. Okay, it's a very, very rare, it never happened before, but then again, computers are only 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Maybe we could see it, okay? Granted. Let's, if that happens, then we've got a couple of things. One, then you would have to, the person who invented that or creates this technology could then use it in, uh, in uh, nicely, let's say, as the community would expect and mine Bitcoin very, very efficiently and get very, very rich doing so. You're, uh, you're suggesting that they would then have this technology, not take the profit, mo the profit motive of doing that and destroy Bitcoin. So now nefarious actors, people who are invested uh, uh, in the existing system of um, fiat currency, i.e. governments, they may well do that. So there is an argument there. Let's say they do that, right? Okay, if they do that, what is it that they can do? Miners cannot steal your money. Miners cannot sign a transaction and transfer your Bitcoin somewhere else. All that miners can do is include transactions in a block or not. So for a time, when this leap in technology comes about and a nef nefarious actor chooses to not use the technology to profit handsomely um, in the Bitcoin system, but instead tries to destroy it, then all they can do is just destroy it, get no benefit out of it. They can't steal anybody's funds. And it would mean that the, 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 um, the network may grind to a halt. It ceases being useful as money because they're not including any transactions in the block. And until some other actors come along and continue the chain. This is a problem. By the way, this problem has also been solved with some of the other chains and some of the other proof of uh, stake systems that are out there. So there's lots of different arguments for that. Bitcoin is a technology and the technologists and the, the participating community, that is the Bitcoin miners and the Bitcoin users working, they can change the technology within some parameters to do so in a way that would allow it to keep going after that change. But would it be a shock to the system? Would it hurt for a period? Absolutely. And that may be weird, that might, but hang on, you can't have a monetary system that functions like this. That's because we are used to this world right now where government decrees currency. We, are, we should expect, and what has happened throughout history is there are many different currencies in operation at any one time. And so there's no reason if, you know, there's, there's several different blockchains out there now. There's also gold, there's also other things. So if there was a shock to the system of one chain, would... Can other chains step up? Can other uh, monies step up? Will, will the life still go on? Yes, it can. You know, in a robust system, we wouldn't rely on just one currency. There would be several. Is there, the only question is, is there room for Bitcoin? Is there room for other blockchains out there? And there are certain transactions out there where nothing yet invented can hold a candle to how efficient and brilliant Bitcoin is. And so I think that with the, that's kind of covered all of those things from Peter. Um, guys, let me know what you think. Have I made sense of any of those arguments? Are my arguments flawed anywhere? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you think I nailed it. And of course, Peter, I'd love to hear from you too. And of course, if you want to do an interview, Peter, I'd love to do this in person. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for us to do. And let me go into this second video here. So this is, this is a really, uh, really fun video I did. It was, who is right? Schiff, Dent, or Maloney? Talking about Peter Schiff, Harry Dent, and Mike Maloney. Um, so these are three, um, Awesome, very, very smart guys, um, and they've been predicting the collapse for quite a while now. It's finally starting to happen, and what we see is that their predictions go off in different directions. It was a really cool video. I highly recommend you go and watch it. The two videos I've mentioned will be in the description, of course, so you can find them there. Uh, but let's see what Peter wrote here. Um, FYI, my value fund is only down 2% uh, year to date. So when I made the video, um, I did call up uh, Euro, uh, Euro Pacific Capital, which is Peter's company, um, and ask them how they were doing. I believe it was March, and they got slaughtered just like everybody else. It was down significantly. Um, and that was the time I made the video. Um, and so what, what it, it has rebounded really strongly. And to only be down 2% year to date in the year 2020 is a very impressive feat. So credit where credit's due, um, Peter Schiff's fund has come back very, very well. Um, in fact, Morningstar has it ranked number one year to date in its category. Um, he comes down here and acknowledges, we did have a temporary drop in March, as you said, but we rebounced quickly despite the dollar's temporary rise. Um, you should also brush up on my strategy. There is uh, more to it than what you discuss. Once again, Peter, I've, yeah, I've watched a lot of your videos. So if I have missed some parts, it was it was definitely um, accidental and not uh, intentionally. And I would love to have you on. If I've, I've watched a lot of your videos. So if I, didn't, uh, if I can't catch all the details of your plan, 
there's um you might want to make a video where I ask you questions and we can help hash it out for everyone to watch. Um, that would be I think that people would really enjoy that. So love to hear from you, Peter. Guys, go ahead, hit that like button. Let me know what you want in the in the next uh, in the next upcoming videos. I've got a Q&A coming up, so please ask questions in this video and in all my other videos. I do go through them looking for questions before I do my Q&As. Um, oh, and also, by the way, I try to in, improve uh, production value a little bit. Let me know how this is working out. Is this a win or is this a bit of a fail? Let me know if you like this layout. And uh, please go ahead, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.